I'm Jean Wells and welcome to my studio today. Normally, these little pieces you see, I would have tossed in the garbage in the old days, but I found that these smaller pieces stitched together create little jewels of interest in your work. So I begin by um, thinking about a row and you can see I just laid out little pieces. They aren't trimmed to all the same length like we normally would do. I mean, you could always cut off a little bit of one of these. Um, but what I do is load them up on my ruler to transport to the sewing machine. And then I'm going to pick them up in pairs and stitch them together. And I then end up with pieces that look somewhat like this. But you can see on this one where I stitched this pair together before I added the gold and then added the gray. That creates even more interest. Obviously this is way too long. You know, if I want to, I can trim that off right now, but I really don't need to because I'm going to trim these after I sew them. You know, I can then take and trim up some of these little loose ends. Up here, you can see where I've sewed lots of little pieces together. And when I'm making these compositions, I think about what I want the kind of highlight color to be to pull the eye through. And I think that this kind of funky gold really does that in this piece because there's quite a bit of it. Log Cabin is probably my favorite traditional block. There's something about it that um, I find in design to be very, very useful. So you'll see here that there are two different ways to construct Log Cabin. You start with a center of some kind. That was always the hearth of the home. So here it is in this one. And then you're going to add pieces to each side of the center. Here, um, I'm going to start with the gold piece and I will add it to the rest. Then I'm going to go opposite and that technique is called courthouse steps. So now I've added two opposite sides of the center. Then I would add the two side pieces. So that's one way of creating a log cabin block in very simple form. The other way is where you circle around and I would start with the center, add the gold. Then I'm gonna take and add the rust and already you know, I would need to trim that off after I sew it. Then, um, oh, I think I'll turn these around. <laughs> I'll add the gray next. So I've started on this side and I'm circling around. So side, top, opposite side, and then add the bottom. I end up with the same sort of composition in that each of them has a center and is surrounded by strips. It's just two ways to get there. There's no reason though that you can't, if you want to, I could add two different colors on one side if I wanted something kind of a skinny color. I want you to look at this next one and see this center. I start with the gold, rust, blue, then I added the tan and the brown. So I added two different strips on that side. This is improvisational piecing. You can do anything you want. So I'm going to use this piece as the center for another log cabin. So I would start with this, then I'm going to add the gray and the gold and the tan. Then I'm going to sew all these together like you saw before, add that whole piece to this side. Now you'll notice that I have this laid out on a piece of uh, flannel and I really like using some sort of a design um, 
wall or a piece of fabric so that I can audition these fabrics. You know, they're all trying out for my piece. They may not all work. So this way you can at least get a feel for what it might look like. Now here's one more. You can see I'm a bit obsessed about this technique. Um, here's probably it was some detail piecing that I had like this and I decided to cut part of it apart and use it in the center. And then I'm adding two strips on this side, one strip on this one, one on this one, and one on this one. So I hope that shows you that there's really lots of ways to work. I also use this technique when I want to try out colors and see if I like the palette well enough to invest a bunch of time in it in creating a new project. Let's go back and look at um, Garden uh, Delights on the wall and I'll point out a few other things. I want to point out uh, some things on this quilt. Notice that this strip is made up of three different fabrics. So that's a variation that you can do. And then the little narrow red that you saw in here, I extended out into the quilt when I went to put the quilt together. This whole piece was uh, different pieces of strata that I made when demonstrating the technique in the classes that I teach. And it wasn't until I was ready to do um, the new book that I thought I should put those together. And I had so much fun with this. You can see the little log cabin that we uh, talked about before with this detail piecing down here. This small little piece of detail piecing. And this log cabin, I think, is my favorite. Um, I really like the color palette I ended up with in there. Notice how the blue is really dominant here, a little less dominant inside. Your colors are going to take on different roles as you work with them. And in the new Intuitive Color and Design book, I talk about how to use color and work with color and to approach it on a very practical way and then we work a lot with the more improvisational piecing. Thank you for watching.